Welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, in this video, I wanted to go over the uh, cliff or cave walls, I should say now, the uh, cave walls that I've been working on as well as show you the boards that they're um, going to be resting on. Uh, this project is uh, intended for use with the uh, Escape from Goblin Town uh, release that GW put out, um, I don't know, a couple months back now. And uh, after the uh, previous video on these pieces, the customer had requested that I go in and do a little more detailing work on them. And that gave me a chance actually to reflect a little bit on where those pieces were. And maybe if I, if I can find a good screenshot or, or a section of video, I'll put a little picture in picture in there um, to see what they look like before. But of course, you could always go back to the video and take a look at it. But in any case, um, it gave me a second to reflect on that and what I really needed to do to sort of make them look a little bit more realistic and make them pop a little bit more. So um, let's take another look at these uh, pieces now that they're done. And I'll show you um, some of the changes that I made and why. So before taking a, a close look at the detail of these pieces, what I wanted to do is give you just a little bit of a panoramic shot, talk about color choices first. The customer wants, wants, wanted, has requested, <laughs> Uh, four 24 by uh, 24 panels to uh, be boards on the table that these pieces will rest on and these will be the foundation that he puts the Goblin Town on top of. Now he said um, similar to the Ashland waste uh, boards that I've done in the past but uh, he was thinking you know, that they could have multiple functions uh, for future gaming as well. And what you can see, what I've done here, is I've tried to take some of the colors out of the rocks, which I have put a very heavy, uh, you know, uh, burnt umber and, uh, what's the other color I'm thinking of? Burnt umber and raw umber into the grays, which are, you know, browns and reds that really tint that gray. And I decided to carry that into the boards by scrubbing in some very dark patches of the umber colors and then interspersing that with a slightly highlighted you know more traditional gray color i've left the boards relatively muted however as thinking if I, <coughs> excuse me if i brighten them too highly uh, brighten them too much, I'm, you're really going to lose that sense that this is some sort of abyss that the uh, cave walls are surrounding, that the goblin town is suspended over. So I've decided to leave them relatively dark and I'll give you a close-up of them so you can see the texture but I wanted to give you a more of a panoramic look at them first so you could take in the the whole color scheme as a as a sense. It uh, varies in its appearance depending on the lighting and its intensity so that would affect its overall look as well um, and that might be something for the customer to consider. It would only take a few minutes to really run over these with a bright uh, dry brush just to make it pop but I think that if you want the caves to feel deep, um, leaving them muted is perhaps the better way to go. Then um, taking a look at the uh, cave walls, uh, first, you'll notice that I've removed the talus along the bottom. The customer pointed out, of course, that the uh, talus isn't really appropriate because these are cave walls bordering a suspended goblin town, right? Because if you remember when characters would fall off the, the walkways, if you haven't seen the movie, I, I'm kind of surprised if you're watching my channel, you've probably seen it. But in any case, uh, you know, it was, it was an immense drop down. Uh, and so we're, we're suspended perhaps 100 feet or more in the air. So no talus along the bottom. Now I got lucky here in that the uh, spackle that came up against the sides really didn't bond uh, very well. And in fact, in a few spaces, um, hadn't even fully cured yet because uh, it was you know quite thick, even though I built it up in layers. So all I had to do was pry off the hardboard bottom and the rest of this uh, popped off relatively easily and then I could go in and detail the bottoms to bring it up to the rest of the standard. That was really um, a little bit lucky and in the sense that I really wanted to preserve the full 8 inch height. Um, this comes up to about 8 inches here. We're looking at about 6.5 or 6 or so here. 
and uh, you know, assuming that the parapets are going to be at some point sitting this high with a miniature, it's still going to give the impression that you are, you know, in a subterranean area, you're below the top level, if you will, of the rocks. So got a little lucky there, pulled those all off, that didn't take too long, and then went back in and started working on these again. Now the customer had noticed in the previous video that the detail was not quite the same, and I'll actually... Before we go in close, let's take a look at a, at a more distant piece here. That the texture was not quite the same as my original test piece here. So I actually took a few minutes to think about this test piece and what it is that gives it um, a different texture. And first I realized that I had made the cuts um, quite a bit larger. And you can see here that the texture is relatively smaller uh, than this piece. But this piece also stands um, probably almost 12 inches higher, maybe more. And uh, I was just kind of giving a first go at it. I think the shorter height here guided my hand to smaller detail. Uh, and, and I, you know, it whether it works or not in your opinion it's just a, sort of the way my mind ended up i guess in re in reflection so i couldn't necessarily expand the overall sheets of it but i did notice that in these pieces we had more of irregular uh shapes where you know there were hanging pieces jutting out from it as well as some of this this sheeting along some of these areas where thin slices had come out so what I decided to do was try to emulate some of that in the work that was already existing and accentuate some of those deeper clefts. You can see here an area where I've tried to bring that in, um, create a, a deeper cuts into it as well as give more sheathing, more layering to the areas uh, you know, scattered throughout to give it a more of a sense of a you know, shale-like surface sheeting off. So probably at this point it's better to, let's take a closer look at it and you can see that detail up close. So what I did, and you can see you know, in areas right in here for instance, is I went in and sliced more layers thinner um, to give it more of a plane-like look and even in some of these areas here, you know, doing some cuts and leaving some of those cuts without having actually pulled them apart to try to give it a more of a layered look rather than a big chunky look as as if, if this material is kind of sliding off I'm picturing it more as a sort of like some kind of realm of mica or something almost of course it's not painted like mica but you get the idea of of a plated um, striation in terms of the the rock structure so I tried to bring that in more, as well as vary the size of the of the cuts. So here you can see, you know, I've left them some some kind of larger pieces, and then in some areas, <clears throat> you know, even cut in a, a couple irregular shapes. And here you can see some of those those smaller details and thinner lines, trying to add a little bit more visual interest and a little bit more variation to it. Um, I think that detail actually made quite a significant difference and uh, you could take a look at the previous video if you forgot what it looked like but it had a much more regular sort of layering to it um, throughout because I was trying to be quick in case the customer um, didn't want me to invest a significant more of time and I told the customer um, I'll match them hour for hour I'll put in an hour free for every extra hour I add to this because I really did want to add some more detail to it so uh, he's been a great customer and I decided you know uh, it's good for both of us um, makes my work look better and gives him a better table um, so that gives you a sense of how these uh, came out and maybe we should take a look at another set just to see some of the continuity and uh, and variation as well and here are two of the side pieces so again you can see I, I tried to get in there create some deeper fissures open it up a little bit more um, add in some more uh, you know layered uh, feel to the rock and also I noticed that the stippling action of the stiff brush really knocked down a lot of the blade marks so the ones that are you know still present don't look actually very out of place at all and in fact I think they add quite a bit to it so I was really pleased and hadn't really anticipated that because before the stippling they really showed very very strongly and uh, when I say stipple I should really say mash 
um, oh, I meant to keep my two brushes around that I used. I basically destroyed two old brushes um, because you have to just really strike the foam pretty hard. And in fact, um, I had to keep pliers with me to keep straightening the ferrule of the brush and the bristles and combing them out to try to keep them from going totally sideways after working on, you know, of course, this is a lot of linear feet of, of foam to work on. In fact, uh, this is uh, 12 linear feet, um, plus, you know, in eight inches height. So there's a lot of square inches of, of mashing to going on there. But this gives you a sense of what the, uh, 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 the one of the sides looks like. So you can see again, you know, trying to maintain some of that continuity of feel. Uh, but, uh, you know, constantly adding in variation in terms of some of the cuts and the overall, um, you know, undulation of the height. If I pan back a little bit, you can see um, some of that as well. Wasn't really sure how to finish the tops. So in some areas, I sheaved it back um, pretty gradually to a, a more of a narrow point. In some areas, I left them kind of thick to try it again to add a little bit of that variation. And I hope you can see, um, you know, some of the colors mixed within the grays in the rocks um, and they don't come out actually as strong as I had hoped. I actually had washed over the rocks with several colors including a relatively bright umber. Uh, it was, um, wait a minute, I got the paint right here. What was that? Uh, yeah, uh, using uh, burnt umber from uh, Liquitex uh, Basics and this while this tube looks really brown, this has a lot of red in it. So I diluted it with some water and then successively washed over the rocks in patches to try to bring it out. But I think priming them with a very dark color initially, um, see the backs here for their starting color, give you a sense of that um, side by side. Um, this uh, is too dark of a starting color to really bring some of those colors out. So I actually spent a bit of wasted time of my own uh, experimenting with that and uh, next time I will probably start with a much lighter gray and go darker. Um, but I was afraid because of the pink underneath I wanted to make sure I had a good firm coverage of that before I applied any paint to it and uh, going lighter probably would have been the smarter choice. But in any case I really like the color of the stones the way they've come out. I think they have a lot of a lot of earthy tones in them um, and uh, for those of you you know I've had a few people ask how do I get my rocks this color um, burnt umber raw umber those are your best friends to cut into your grays to really um, get them earthy looking in fact I had a friend who said I think it was uh, burnt umber he said burnt umber it's like dirt in a tube so that's how I got that look and so here you can see um, several of the pieces almost all of the pieces. There's a section that hangs off the side here. Of course, this is only two of the four boards. Um, but you can see um, what it might look like assembled uh, with, uh, you know, sort of the surrounding border. Now, these are resting on the uh, surface itself, and there you can see Mr. Uh, Tippy McLean for a uh, scale comparison. But it gives you a sense of how the soul, the the whole set sort of looks in its entirety as it might appear um, once uh, gaming begins. Now, one of the concerns um, that I had was um, how stable the pieces would be. Um, here's um, one of the other uh, pieces. And, you know, with regards, because they don't have a footing, um, you know, is this going to be something that is um, really tippable? And actually, um, because they're a full inch and a half thick, um, they're not too bad. And uh, when they do fall, um, because they're unbased, you know, it's just light foam and the foam's already been compressed by the uh, texturing process, it's actually relatively durable. I would recommend that the customer not drop them on the floor, however, um, but I did have one fall and it received um, almost no damage at all. So um, I felt a little bit better about that um, in terms of, you know, playability because the last thing I want is, you know, I have uh, tippy trees are a real annoying thing for me and I don't want the walls to be um, really easily um, falling over as well, but they seem relatively stable. So they rest on the uh, outside of the borders of the, um, of the boards, you know, sitting flush right on them and uh, give the effect uh, pretty much that you see here. Um, so the entire set will complete um, walls that are four feet on this side. Um, the other piece not shown here is, is quite a bit longer. And, uh, and then of course four feet on this side as well. And then the four feet in the back to complete a three-sided box. 
So I hope you enjoyed uh, taking a look at these boards and getting uh, at least a little piece of my mind as to how I tried best to go about carving these. Um, and uh, for those of you who are new to this project, um, there is a video when I started it um, back a couple that also links to another video, as, which is where I discovered, you know, sort of got inspired, if you will, on this type of a carving technique. Um, it's not the uh, quickest technique, but it produces a very interesting effect that's fairly unique and I think fairly convincing, particularly for an underground cave wall. Um, and it might need a little modification for an outdoor environment, um, but you can see the original artist who uh, sort of pioneered this technique and see he's doing it for an outdoor layout for a railroad. So, you know, it's possible and it's about um, your imagination and the amount of time and uh, the number of sharp blades you have to uh, complete that kind of work. Uh, if you have questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. I'm always happy to try to offer uh, tips or, or hints or, you know, just uh, thanks as well for um, people who uh, leave feedback. I try to answer as many as I can. And uh, when I get photos of these uh, finished, I'll post, post them on uh, terranscapes.com in the uh, custom work gallery. Uh, once I get um, an okay from the customer, he likes them as they are here before I do any um, final modifications to them. And I will um, be back relatively soon with another video um, coming up on the um, large snowboard set that I've been sort of doing some prep work on. So uh, pretty excited to get to work on that. And I'm sure there will be uh, lots of discoveries and challenges along the way as that's going to involve some new techniques that I haven't really done before. So uh, thanks for joining me once again. I do appreciate it. Um, it means a lot to me, all the people who have uh, been following me all along, as well as the new subscribers. And uh, keep your eye on the channel, and I will be back soon with another video.